Halogens are not the only good leaving groups in organic compounds. In this video, we're going to examine the alkyl sulfonates, which also contain a good leaving group in the sulfonate group, which forms a sulfonate anion after it departs. And this is quite frequently the conjugate base of a strong acid that's structurally analogous to sulfuric acid. The upshot of all this is that we can use alkyl sulfonates just like alkyl halides in substitution and elimination reactions, and they react fantastically in these reactions, just like alkyl halides. The other advantage of alkyl sulfonates is that they can be readily made from alcohols. So we'll look at methods, reactions we can use to make alkyl sulfonates from alcohols. And so if we have a way to make an alcohol, we can convert it into a sulfonate and then substitute that sulfonate group for a nucleophile to create a wide variety of products starting from alcohols or even precursors to alcohols. So let's start by recognizing what we mean when we say an alkyl sulfonate. So the sulfonate group, sulfonate is an anion with three sulfur oxygen bonds, two sulfur oxygen double bonds, and one sulfur oxygen single bond. The singly bonded oxygen is anionic, and this last bond to sulfur is to some carbon group R. And this is commonly an aromatic ring or a methyl group or a trifluoromethyl group, this R group here. When that sulfonate anion links up with, for example, a cationic carbon, we get an alkyl sulfonate like this, where we have the sulfonate group here in green and an alkyl group, electrophilic carbon in particular here, connected to the singly bonded oxygen of the sulfonate group. And because this anion is so stable, these are analogous to alkyl halides, which also contain a group that forms a stable anion in the halogen, iodine, bromine, or chlorine. So alkyl sulfonates react like alkyl halides, particularly at this electrophilic carbon directly connected to the good leaving group. So sulfonates, great leaving groups just like halides, and they're great leaving groups because the sulfonate anion is resonance stabilized. This structural pattern of two double bonds to oxygen and one single bond uh, to an oxygen with negative charge creates the possibility of resonance delocalization of that negative charge over all three oxygens. So this is quite similar to sulfate and not quite as stable as the sulfate anion, but in the same ballpark. The conjugate acids of uh, these sulfonate anions are generally strong acids, as we'll see. The three most important sulfonate groups that we see in organic compounds are the methane sulfonate or mesylate group, that's abbreviated OMS. This O in OMS refers to this oxygen. The MS refers to the methane sulfonyl group, which is this portion here. The toluene sulfonyl or toluene sulfonate group is abbreviated OTS. This is the most commonly used. And then the triflate group, in which that R group is a CF3, is abbreviated OTF. And so we have an alkyl mesylate, alkyl tosylate, and alkyl triflate here. Toluene sulfonate is typically abbreviated tosylate. These conjugate acids of, these con of, of the sulfonate anions can be used as strong acids, and the pKa's bear this out. Triflic acid, trifluoromethane sulfonic acid, is stronger than HBr, pKa of negative 14. Remarkably acidic compound, more acidic than sulfuric acid, in fact. But even paratoluene sulfonic acid and methane sulfonic acid are strong acids as well based on their pKa's. So you may see these compounds in abbreviated form used as reagents, strongly acidic reagents, MSOH, TSOH is probably the most common, and TFOH is also used. Alkyl sulfonates are typically made from the corresponding alcohol, where instead of the sulfonyl group, we have just an H here. So here we start with ROH, and the product of the reaction is an alkyl tosylate, in this case, ROTS. So we can notice the toluene sulfonyl group here is replacing this H in the starting alcohol. And this is accomplished via nucleophilic substitution at sulfur. We use a reagent that has a good leaving group connected to the sulfur, a chlorine, such that the nucleophilic oxygen can displace this good leaving group chloride. That occurs through electron flow like this. This is an SN2 step. And this leaves positive charge on this oxygen. That can be essentially removed, put into this pyridine base via treatment with pyridine base. And the byproduct not shown here is pyridinium chloride. We made Cl minus here, and we're making a pyridinium cation here with an NH plus in it. 
and that byproduct is ionic and is washed away and we get isolate what we want which is the alkyl tosylate in this case and now notice we've turned the OH group a poor leaving group into OTS a fantastic leaving group so this is a great way to get rid of an alcohol and replace with a bond to some nucleophile going through an alkyl tosylate compound now chiral alcohols in which this carbon linked to the OH group is a stereogenic center react with retention of configuration because only the oxygen participates in this reaction. Notice the R group doesn't participate at all. So if there's some kind of configuration or three dimensionality to this R group, it's maintained throughout this reaction. In this example, for instance, we've got um, a 2-butanol, S2-butanol, when it reacts with tosyl chloride and pyridine base, we get the tosylate with retention of configuration at that carbon highlighted in purple. So again, great way to convert alcohols with a poor leaving group in OH into alkyl sulfonates with a good leaving group, OTS. And the conditions, again, are tosyl chloride, TSCl, and pyridine base, which we often just abbreviate as PY or PYR, or sometimes I'll write out pyridine explicitly. The purpose of this base is essentially to remove the alcohol proton after this SN2 step has occurred. Alkyl sulfonates engage in substitution and elimination reactions just like alkyl halides. And I'll return to these reactions after we've talked about the substitution and elimination reactions in more detail, but all I want to say now, just to make a, a general point that we're going to use later, alkyl sulfonates are no different than alkyl halides in terms of their reactivity trends and patterns. So everything you already know about how alkyl halides react and everything we will learn about alkyl halides and how they react is going to apply to alkyl sulfonates as well.